Hello everybody, this is Maxine Taylor. I have the most awesome guest today. You know my guest. Her name, she is known as Dr. Love. And she is the web's first and immensely popular relationship advice giver. She's awesome. But that's only one reason why I have invited her to be my guest on this show. <clears throat> she has written the most extraordinary, captivating book. It's called Love Never Dies. Now, you may have read the book. You may have bought the book. You may, you've seen her interviewed on radio. Oh, radio, you've heard her on radio. You've seen her interviewed on TV. <clears throat> she is our guest today sharing her incredible love story. It is so inspiring. You will not be able to put it down. When I started reading it, I couldn't put it down. So, you know who she is? Her contact information, and then I'm gonna let her take over, is askdrlove.com. That's askdrlove.com. Please, welcome. Dr. Love. Jamie, welcome to Move Into the Magic. Oh, it's so great to be with you. I've been looking forward to it. Tell us, give us the background story on this remarkable book and lead us through the three parts. Oh, it. I would love to. So I have to begin with my early life. When I was a little girl, I had a premonition of the guy that I was going to marry. I saw his face. I saw his body. I saw him fleshed out. So I said, you know what? I'm not going to date. I'm going to wait till this guy appears. And he actually did appear on the first day of my freshman year at Vassar College. I had been shut out of all intro sociology classes, and I wanted to take sociology. So I go to the department secretary, Judy Cadwallader, and I say, what can I do? And she says, go ask the department chair, Jean Pain, if he can find a seat for you in one of the closed classes. Well, Maxine, the minute I stepped into that man's office, I had the first and only out-of-body experience of my life. I literally felt my soul shooting at high speed through a tunnel to the end of my life. And then when I shot back into my body, I received the message, remember every aspect of this meeting, he's going to be everything to you one day. And then I promptly forgot about the message and went about my life as a freshman at Vassar. Now, I found out right after I met Jean that for most of his life, he had been one of the most famous Jesuit priests in history. He had taught at the Vatican. He founded a movement called Liberation Theology designed to fight church oppression from within. And he actually launched to international fame when he publicly opposed the Pope and the Catholic Church as they were trying to block the legalization of divorce in Italy. And John was a radical feminist Jesuit priest. And he told me later that he didn't want to see women trapped in marriages where they were being abused. So he fought on the grounds of liberation theology. The church should butt out of the private sector. He won. He got the divorce bill passed, changed the course of Italian history. And soon after, the Pope granted him the dispensation of his vows so that he wasn't excommunicated. He left the Jesuit order and the priesthood, and he was recruited by Vassar College. Now, everybody has to know this because this figures in a very important way in our story. My background was completely different from Jean's. I was raised by two devoutly Jewish atheist parents. The only religion my parents practiced was religiously hating each other's guts. <laughs> <laughs> and mine. They taught me not to believe in God or the afterlife. And I never read the Bible, never went to church or synagogue. All right. So now four years after my fated meeting with Jean, it's my senior year at Vassar and I need help with a statistical portion of my thesis. And I had heard that among other things, he had been a very prominent statistician, having founded the Vatican's first and only social research center. So even though he wasn't my advisor, I asked him to give me help. And he cheerfully gave me his time. And Maxine, within a couple of weeks, we knew. We were crazy for each other. We were twins separated at birth. We were soulmates. From that moment on, for almost 30 years, we were inseparable. We wrote books together. We restored houses together. We just rejoiced in every moment that we spent together. Now, in the last year of Jean's bodily existence, 
we both privately started having premonitions that he was going to die of an accident. We just didn't know when or where it was going to happen. On the day we leave for our final vacation to Italy, lightning struck our rose arbor and destroyed it. And then I see 40 huge black crows in the yard and I'm thinking, this is not good. We go to Italy anyway. And one day while we're sitting on the beach, Jean's hand, his left hand was up over his head as if to block the rays of the sun. The next thing I know, a bee swooped down and stung his left hand at the exact location of Christ's stigmata. And then Maxine, I watched my beloved suffocate to death in front of my eyes. Mm. I try to describe in part one of Love Never Dies, the agony of having him ripped from me. When you read the book, if you haven't already read it, you'll get the full flavor of what it was like. So to cut to the chase, I go back to my hotel room and I collapse on the bed. I'm shaking, I'm trembling, I'm crying, I'm hysterical. The next thing I know, I felt that man's hand stroke the entire length of my spine. And I sit bolt upright, I look over my shoulder, I don't see anything, but I knew he was with me. And he's been with me ever since. His astonishing manifestations to this day, often in front of witnesses, have proven to me we don't die. And therefore our relationships are not meant to end in bodily death. And so as a result, I created my groundbreaking new trans-dimensional grief therapy method that totally diverges from the Western approach to grief, which is grieve, let go, and move on, and do it in six months, or else we're gonna give you a psychiatric label, we're gonna shove pills down your throat. Instead, I show everybody how to say hello, not goodbye, reconnect, reestablish your relationship, and how to do it without a medium, a channeler, or a psychic. And then there's just one more piece, because as a shrink I know, millions of people worldwide harbor unfinished business with those in spirit. And again, Western grief therapy gives us no way of working it out. So my method shows you how to use my dialoguing with the departed technique to talk back and forth and heal unfinished business that remains. Oh. Oh, you have so much to share. So much to share. Uh, you, when I started reading your book, as I said, it was captivating. I could not put it down because, first of all, I knew it was a true story. Um, you conveyed your emotion perfectly. You, the reader is brought right in. The words that you use are so powerful. They and, and, and they inspire us. They uh, trigger our heartstrings. Um, so I guess what I would love for you to share now with our audience is what you can offer them. Tell us more about the story. Give us examples. What you can offer someone who has lost a loved one. It could be a recent loss. It could have been years ago. I know your experience in this is vast. And what you can do for those people who are still grieving. All right. So I'll give, I'll give just one example. When you read, Love Never Dies is broken into three parts. The first part is the continuation of our love story from the night he left his body. So I'll just give one example. And then when you read part one, you'll get all the sense of, how uh, Jean made his presence known and continues to. Then I'm gonna talk about part two, which is helping everybody overcome the false beliefs, the false religious teachings that block us from reconnecting. And then I'll talk a little bit about part three, how you can reestablish your own dialogue and how you can continue your relationship and heal unfinished business. So I'll give one example from part one. Very early in my bereavement, uh, I did a lot of crying. It was a hobby. <laughs> and one day I was lying on the closet floor crying and I'm thinking, I've got to call my friend Anne. No, don't bother her. Oh, I got to call her. Well, after about 20 minutes of this silent hemming and hawing, in the distance I hear my phone ring. It's my friend Anne. Mm. I can hear, you know, she's calling me. So I get up, I pick up the phone and she says, Jamie, did you call me? I said, Anne, no, no, I was lying on the floor crying. She said, but Jamie, my phone rang and your name and number appeared on my caller ID. 
we were so flabbergasted because this was a way of John showing me, I'm right here, I know what you need, I heard what you thought. So we were flabbergasted. A, a year later, I have a chest cough, I can't breathe, and I'm thinking, I'm gonna suffocate the way Jean did. So I say to him out loud, Jean, prove to me you're here right now, that you're still with me. Use that caller ID phone trick. Do it right now with my housekeeper, Donna. Two seconds later, my phone rings. It's Donna. She says, Jamie, did you call? I said, no, Donna, but I told her I asked Jean to do it. And she said, my phone rang and your name and number appeared on my caller ID. Oh. So around this time, I belonged to a writer's group. And the head of the group, a guy named Gabe Davis, another devoutly atheist Jewish guy, has been listening to all the stories of Jean's manifestations. And he says to me at the meeting, you know, Jamie, I'd like to see whether your phone shows a record of having been manipulated to dial out even though you haven't used it. So I forget the challenge. A month later, I'm driving behind Gabe and his wife Robin to meet them for dinner when I suddenly feel a tidal wave of love pouring through me and I knew it was Jean. I look at the clock on my dash, it says 545. As soon as I pull into the restaurant, Gabe stampedes me. He says, Jamie, Jamie, you won't believe what happened. I said, what happened? He said, at 545, my cell phone rang. He said, I looked at the caller ID, your name and number appeared. He said, I picked up the call and a man's voice said, is Jamie there? Is Jamie there? He said the voice had an accent and prolonged the word there while well, Jean was French, and it did prolong when he would say there, there. He said it wasn't a real call. The voice just faded away. He said, go get your phone, see if it dialed me. So I dig into the bottom of my purse. I hadn't used the phone all day. Sure enough, 545, the call log showed that it had dialed Gabe. So the point of all Jean's over-the-top manifestations is simple. He said to me, Jamie, let our love shine like a torch that lights the path for others. So all of Jean's manifestations that I share in part one of Love Never Dies aren't just for me. They're to let everybody watching and listening know that your loved ones are here with you too. They're just waiting for you to open the door of your heart and let them back in. Oh, that is so beautiful. Okay, so now we move to part two of Love Never Dies, where I now turn the baton back over to my reader and I say, listen, I'm going to show you all the reasons why you're not reconnecting and I'm going to help you to reconnect. So first we've got to overcome all the false beliefs and all the false religious teachings that block people. Now, since we're in a short interview today, I'll give one. And then when you read part two of Love Never Dies, you'll see all, you know, the, the obstacles and all the false teachings. And I just chip away at them and help you peel them off. So the first night back from Italy, Jean was quoting something to me. I had no idea what it was. The next day I go to meet his priest to prepare the readings for the funeral. Never met the guy before because I never went to church, right? So I say to the priest, you know, Jean is quoting something to me, some kind of a passage. The priest looks at me like, yo, this babe has rounded the bend. She's lost her marbles. But then, Maxine, when I told him what Jean was saying, the priest blanched. He crossed himself. And he said, dear God, Jamie, at first I did not believe that Jean is speaking to you, but I believe you now. He said, you're quoting an obscure biblical passage from the communion of saints. Like I would have known, I never read the Bible. Jean and I never discussed religion, at least not when he was in a body. It took me a year to understand why Jean chose to quote that and only that passage to me. Because remember, he was a religious pioneer in life. He continues to be in the afterlife. And what I discovered is the communion of saints says that our loved ones in spirit are one with or in communion with God and the saints. And since the Bible is telling us we're supposed to stay in communion and communication with God and the saints, it means the Bible is telling us we're supposed to stay in communion and communication with our loved ones in spirit because they are one with God and the saints. So Jean's point to all of us is, what we've been told about the afterlife is dead wrong, if you'll pardon my pun. <laughs> <laughs> we are not supposed to live in an emotional wasteland, separated from those we love, waiting until we quote unquote die and enter heaven. Because as Jean said to me, Jamie, 
death is an illusion. There's a very thin veil between the realm where you are and the realm where I am. The veil is thinner than you can ever imagine. I'm standing right here. He has said to me, heaven is a state, not a place. So the upshot of this all is, we are not supposed to live in an emotional wasteland separated from those we love. Because heaven is all around us, we're supposed to reconnect now and stay connected now. Now, when you read part two of Love Never Dies, you're going to hear all the other obstacles that people face, and I'm going to help you overcome them, like, oh, it prevents us from moving on. It prevents those in spirit from moving into the light. Oh, you're opening the door to the devil and dark forces. Oh, well, if they reincarnate, they can't reconnect. Uh, well, once they're in heaven, they're out of reach. All of this garbage, <laughs> I basically just eliminate, because Jean has explained to all of us why all of these things are untrue. Now. In part two of part two of Love Never Dies, I then go into the science so that the right brain people understand the science behind how reconnection happens. And I'm just going to simplify it in this way. We're talking about energy. As Einstein said, energy cannot be destroyed. When we leave our bodies, when we shed the turtle shell of our body, the energy of our soul still remains. And what we also know is, from what the quantum physicists tell us about the nature of our universe, 95% of our universe is comprised of dark matter or dark energy. It doesn't reflect light, but it's here. So when Jean said, I'm standing right here, he means I'm in the dark matter. That's, they're literally all around us. They don't go anywhere. They don't move anywhere. They remain in the dark matter and in the dark energy. So all we need to do is we need to learn how to tune to what I call the spirit channel of our brains to perfect our ability to send and receive energetic communications to and from the dark matter or the afterlife or heaven, whatever you want to call it. So that moves us into part three of Love Never Dies, where I am now teaching you how to switch to the, to the spirit channel of your brain and perfect your ability to send and receive. So the first chapter in part three of Love Never Dies involves creating a state of receptivity. Because as Jean said to me right after he left his body, Jamie, the noise of the day drowns me out. Anytime you wanna hear me, be quiet, be still, put your head on my shoulder and you will hear me. So what I show you how to do in this chapter is to create pockets of peace. And I'm not saying you have to convert your condo into a convent. <laughs> I'm just showing you little ways to be still and quiet. I show you how to breathe in order to bring spirit in because spirit is born on the breath. I show you how to use nature to help you be more in tune. I show you how to use hypnagogic or twilight states, the state right when you wake up in the morning and right before you fall asleep. And then last but not least, I give you exercises for heightening your five senses because spirits being pure energy have the ability to send communications to all your senses. And the more your senses are awakened, the more you're going to perceive the signs and the communications that are being sent to you every day, signs that you miss. Now, speaking of signs, that's the next chapter to prepare you for your reconnection. I show you how to recognize the signs of spirit presence because people call me, Maxine, all over the world, I have the number one show on Hay House Radio. I, I was, couldn't believe it. It beat out Van Prague's show. Um, it, it's called Love Never Dies. People call and they say, Jamie, I'm so pissed off at you. I'm so jealous of you. I don't get signs like you get. And then they read this chapter in Love Never Dies on the signs. And they say, oh, this happened and that happened and this happened and that. So for most people, just becoming aware of the signs is sufficient to begin the reconnection. And again, the signs are infinite because spirits have the power to influence the material world in infinite ways. They're sending all kinds of sign to, signs to us. You know, a strange sense, animals behaving oddly, odd physical sensations, chills, goose flesh. They also do symbolic communications like they will drop coins on us that were minted in a special year. I tell this story in Love Never Dies. It was the anniversary week of Jean's bodily departure this last year and a patient of mine named Kyla comes in and I say, you know, he's dropping coins all over the place that were minted the year he left his body. So she blinks and she says, oh my gosh, Jamie, I forgot. I was standing in my bedroom when a coin dropped out of the sky and landed in my boot and I got the message it was for you. I forgot. Let me give it to you now. So she, but Jamie, I've got to tell you, 
last night I dreamed about picking up coins and I thought, I wonder what this means. They're, there you you. Go. They're for you, Jamie. There you go, honey. So, but that's for you too. So anyway, I look at the coin. Yeah, it was minted the year he left his body. Okay, so now at this point, Love Never Dies takes a turn that no book has ever taken. The CEO of Hay House said to me, Jamie, we've never seen anything like this. Because now I show you how to use the signs, the earthly props, which are electronic devices, the open vessels, which are humans and animals, both domestic and wild, to engage in a back and forth dialogue with the help of these props. So I'm gonna give a quick example of the difference between static signs versus dialoguing with the help of signs. It was the anniversary week of Jean's bodily departure this past year, and I go to the chiropractor and I walk in and I say, you know, I'm giving my first talk publicly on Love Never Dies. With that, I smell gardenias. I don't say a word. And I look at the secretary and she says, Jamie, do you smell gardenias? I said, oh my gosh, that's the scent of sanctity. Jean's dropping a sign on both of us at the same time, a static sign. Now I go back to my office. I see a patient named Regina. And I say, Regina, this is what happened. And he dropped the scent of sanctity on me, and I smelled gardenias. With that, I hear Jean dialoguing with me. He says, Jamie, but I wish I could give you roses. With that, my patient pops up off the couch and she says, Jamie, do you smell roses? Now, in that really elegant manifestation, Jean was showing how he could talk to me with the help of my patient, who was an open vessel at that moment, he perfumed her nostril, nostrils with the scent of roses in order to confirm to me you heard me right. I have many other examples of this in Love Never Dies. So essentially, we can dialogue with the help of human and animal open vessels, with signs, with uh, earthly props like electronic devices. And then last but not least, I show you how to establish a direct dialogue. I put you in a trance, I have the visualization and meditation for making contact, and then I show you how to talk back and forth. So if you belong to the group of people who had someone ripped from you due to sudden accidental death or illness and you were robbed the of the chance to say goodbye to the physical body, if you're a parent who lost a child, a child who lost a parent, you need to reconnect and stay connected and continue a dialogue. If you want to obtain guidance, you need to reconnect and also if you have unfinished business, you need to dialogue. So I show you how to do this to whatever end you require. Now, I just want everybody to know, because this is so important, if you are among the millions of people who have unfinished business with any being in spirit, often you have to wait until someone leaves his body to work it out. And this is because they get a life review when they leave their bodies that tells them how they screwed up with us. And so as a result, they are more poised to work it out with us. And in addition, they are also requiring our help in order for them to evolve. Because when they screwed up with us, they know that their spiritual development and evolution requires them to make peace with us. And I tell the story of how I discovered this in Love Never Dies. We don't have time for the whole story, but they, it's a win-win for all of us. They will say to us, I'm begging you, confront me. I can't evolve spiritually until you confront me. And we need to confront them in order to heal our unfinished business. So, and here's the bottom line. We all know that this ride on the earth plane is for one own reason only. This is to teach us how to love ourselves and others. That's why we're here on the earth plane. This life is our love lab. And I am living proof of the challenge. How do you love yourself when your parents beat you verbally and physically? And I tell this very personal story in Love Never Dies where after Jean left his body, I'm plagued by the voices of my parents putting me down, no matter how successful I am. You know, even though I had 30 years with Jean, still the voices telling me I'm no good. I go to my professional group and I say to all the top analysts, I got to get these voices to stop ruining my life. And they say the traditional party line, tell your parents, shut the F up, blah, 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 blah. It never worked. Didn't work for me, never worked for my parents. I come home and I get on my knees and I pray to Jean, please, Jean, please, I'm begging you, help me. 
And Maxine, he appears to me as the embodiment of love. He takes my face in his hands. He turns me toward the light and him. And he says, Jamie, listen, listen, listen to me. Let my love for you fully enter you. And Maxine, in that moment, all the love that he has for me entered me and became my own self-love. And I realized I had to wait until Jean was out of his body in order for this healing to happen because now he's freed from the physical vessel. His soul essence can enter me unimpeded. So my message to everybody watching and listening is reconnecting with your loved ones is your fast track to self-love. Let them fill you to overflowing. Let them heal every part of you, mind, body, and soul. Now your heart is an overflowing well of love that you can bring to the world. That's Love Never Dies. And that is why we came to this planet. And I am so thrilled that you gave us your time today because <clears throat> what I do with my clients is encourage them to love themselves. We've been told it's selfish if you put you first. When you love you Everybody loves you. And I think that is one of the reasons for your enormous success because you love you and people want what you have and you're sharing it in this remarkable, as I said, captivating book. It's incredible. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being my guest today. Um, those of you who have not yet gotten your hands on a copy of Love Never Dies, I know you're going to want to get it. It's a number one bestseller. Uh, again, if you would like to be in touch with Dr. Love herself, her website is askdrlove.com. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And thank all of you for being part of this beautiful show today. Um, and remember, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change.